An old Chinese proverb says a gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trials. In 2007, the Quinnipiac men's soccer team proved old wisdom true by completing one of the biggest turnarounds in NCAA history. Head coach Eric DaCosta talked about thrusting his alma mater into the national spotlight just three years into his rebuilding process. You know, we, we worked extremely hard in the offseason over the course of the last, uh, last three years uh, to, you know, really change the culture of the program, change the, the type of player. Uh, that we were bringing in and, and work with the guys that we had in the program to help them understand that we were working towards towards bigger things and uh, getting into the conference tournament was was a goal of ours from from day one and uh, we we definitely used that as motivation to uh, to do as well as we we did. At nine on one midseason, QU boasted the best start in NEC history, prompting a number 15 ranking in the RPI. Well, uh, we've we've jumped uh, we've jumped in into the spotlight, and uh, you know we, we've come out of nowhere. And I think there's some teams out there, and uh, some people talking about Quinnipiac and trying to figure out where we are, who we are, and, and where we came from. The cost attributed the team's success as a product of stellar performances from Bobcat players. Danilo Skivon and Ross McGinley earned first and second team all-conference places respectively as they finished the year among the NEC's top point producers. And, and these guys were battle-tested and the addition of some players who, who came in this, uh, this 0, 07 season that were able to step in and uh, give us that, um, that experience and leadership that we needed um, in order to, to have the right mix between the young, young players who, who were frustrated by a tough season and had to endure uh, a pretty uh, emotional season to, to come in this year with, with that behind them uh, and have some guys who, who have some leadership and have been down that road before was, uh, was a great recipe for, uh, for success and uh, some players really were able to, to shine off of that and the guys that, uh, uh, that were recognized uh, deserve to be recognized uh, and in my opinion we, we should have had a couple more. Joining Skivon on the first team was NEC Player of the Year Graciano Brito. Brito finished in the top 10 nationally in all major scoring categories after leading the country in goals per game and points per game most of the season. He credits hard work for both his and his team's success. We had a chip on our shoulders. We know we were coming to this season. We needed to do something. I took the season last year personal, so I was doing the whole summer in the gym practicing every day, playing a lot of leagues during the summer, so I couldn't be able to be in shape for this season. Brito was not alone atop the national statistical leaders, however. Second team All-NEC pick Freddie Hall had a spectacular campaign and goal for the Bobcats, finishing the regular season with the best save percentage and the most saves per game in the country. You know, Freddie's phenomenal, uh, and I think any, anyone who, who's had the opportunity and the, and the, the pleasure to see him play, uh, you can see the greatness that he has inside of him. Uh, and at the same time, he, he works uh, tremendously hard to, uh, to get better day in and day out. You know, he, he took a risk in, in coming here to Quinnipiac, and uh, you know, we took a risk on him as well in, in, in the transfer market to say, hey, you, know, uh, he, you have an opportunity to, to really help this, this program and elevate this program, and he's done exactly that. Even with all their success, the season had a bittersweet end as QU missed out on the NEC playoffs and the NCAA tournament leaving players and coaches alike with a bit of unfinished business. And if you check back, uh, you say, and what? We didn't went to the playoffs, we didn't make the NCAAs, uh, so we didn't accomplish that. And at the end of the day, we had a fan fantastic season, a phenomenal turnaround, and uh, we're all happy about that, but we didn't achieve all the goals that we set out to achieve. Uh, so it's a little bit disappointing, and uh, we have a little bit more uh, motivation using, to use to, uh, to come into next season. We have to keep working hard and come back and trying to go to the NECs and win it. Until we do that, uh, it's just going to be like it's just one other team. Yeah, we wanted more, we deserve more, uh, and we need to work harder to, uh, to achieve more. The future remains bright for the Bobcats as the Casa looks forward to next season with a strong returning core. We have a lot of leaders on this team. Uh, we have, uh, and it's a good mix. We have guys who are more, more vocal and demonstrative, and and then there are the guys that uh, that lead us every day on, on the training field. Um, so there are some guys within the program that are going to do a great job. You know, Freddie's always done a great job. Shane Recklett's always done a great job. Uh, we have guys like Fabricio Silva and uh, and guys who who every single day in training show up with that professional mentality and understand what it takes. Uh, we have a ton of guys who, who give us leadership in different ways and I think that's what, uh, what makes us unique. After flirting with perfection for most of the season, the Bobcats fell into trying times once again. Ideally, they hope all the friction from the end of the 2007 campaign 
will help them to produce a gem in 2008. From Bobcat Field, I'm Jimmy Lentz.